So now we'll go into polymers, which is uh, one of the final parts. And as I mentioned before in the beginning, polymers is um, unfortunately a lot of uh, memorization. So going through polymers now. So polymers are essentially large molecules of repeating units or subunits called monomers. So we have addition polymers, which form via addition reactions. So addition reactions we mentioned before, where like the double bond or the triple bond opens up to add more things to it. So that's how addition polymers form. So uh, condensation polymers, on the other hand, form via condensation reactions. So water is always a byproduct of these condensation reactions. So that's something to always keep in mind as well. So that's the difference between an addition polymer and a condensation polymer. And we're going to go through a couple of these. So here, these are a couple addition polymers. So we have polyethylene. So we have high density and low density polyethylene. You'll need to know all of these, by the way. So low density polyethylene. So uh, don't stress too much about memorizing this all of like all of this now. Um, polymers usually come towards the end of the module, so all you need to know is a general idea of like the addition, presence of additional and and um, condensation polymers currently. But you will need to know this for the HSC. So, low density polyethylene is uh, where branching occurs, so molecules cannot pack tightly. So because of that. So what happens is they heat it under high temperature and pressure, and so branching occurs, and so the molecules don't pack tightly, and so what happens is it, it becomes flexible but it's, and tough, but it's not strong. So it has a very low, um, has a lower melting point and boiling point than high density polyethylene. And the uses are, the uses are very important that you know what uses are. It's used for like, um, like plastic bags and stuff, and for like the, the, the cling wrap, stuff like that. So yeah, plastic bags, cling wrap, and squeezy bottles. High density polyethylene, on the other hand, is produced uh, using a catalyst. And this catalyst means that it doesn't branch as much. So using that catalyst, it doesn't branch as much. And because of that, uh, it's more rigid, durable, and it has a higher melting point and boiling point than low density polyethylene. And because of this, uh, the rigid and durable nature of its properties uh, means that it can be used for garbage bins, buckets, kitchen utensils, natural gas piping, and play equipment. So in terms of the properties, it's very important that you link the, the, the properties to the uses. So that's what something that's very important. You can't have one without the other. The uses always relate to the properties, and the properties always relate to the uses. So now let's go into polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, which you might have heard, PVC pipes and stuff. So yeah, it's hard and brittle because of chain stiffening due to large chlorine atoms but it can be made more flexible with the presence of plasticizers. So this makes it more flexible. Another thing is that CCL bonds, they can degrade in UV light. So because of that, um, like, you know, UV blockers and stuff like that are added into the, the polyvinyl chloride to make it more resistance to, resistance, resistant to UV light. And the CCL bonds mean that dipole-dipole bonds can form between the polymer molecules. And because of that, the presence of these polar dipole molecules mean that it has strong intermolecular forces and so higher melting point and boiling point. And because of this, it can be used for electrical insulation, garden hoses, drainage and sewerage, guttering and downpipes. Same with polystyrene now. Uh, the big benzene ring causes chain stiffening. So like, so the presence of the big benzene ring over here, uh, it causes chain stiffening. And because of that, uh, polystyrene is also quite rigid and brittle. Uh, there's also a few crystalline regions, meaning it's um, you know, less dispersed, so it can be transparent sometimes. It's a good electrical insulator, and it can also be inflated with hydrocarbon gases to become what we know as styrofoam. And so these trapped gases make it quite low uh, density and a good sound insulator. But this isn't at its rest state. This is after it's been inflated with hydrocarbon gases. So a couple uses are, its um, rigid nature allows it to be used as tool handles, hard plastic furniture. Its transparent and rigid nature allows it to be used as CD cases. And when it's inflated, it can be used as cheap, light foam insul lightweight insulator, foam cups, and protective packaging. So if you order something quite big, like a TV or something, it'll probably come like, you know, packed in, in styrofoam. And then we have PTFE, or polytetrafluoroethane. So PTFE, uh, it has minimal chain branching, so the molecules pack together very closely, and so it has very strong dispersion forces, so high melting point and boiling point and has a high strength of CF bonds, making it quite unreactive. So because of the high strength of the CF bonds, it, the CF bonds don't really wanna break, so it's quite unreactive, right? And it's unable to form hydrogen bonds. So it's not, it's quite insoluble with water. And because of this, right, it can react quite easily. So it can, so because of its being water insoluble, right? So 
It's unreactive and it's unable to form hydrogen bonds. So it has a high melting point and boiling point. And because of these properties, it's used for non-stick coating on pans. So most of the non-stick coating that you see will be uh, a version or a type of polytetrafluoroethylene or ethane. And it's also used in pipelines to transfer hot chemicals. So that's kind of like um, how PTFE is used. Now we have condensation polymers. So going through condensation polymers, we have nylon. So nylon 66 or 66 nylon is the main uh, polymer that you'll be using. And some of these properties are, so the chains are packed together quite closely and they have high dispersion high and hydrogen bonds. They're quite rigid, durable and elastic. They have a high melting point and boiling point and they have a high degree of polymerization. So they have, they have very long polymers. And this um, gives it the property of high tensile strength. It gives it, yeah, the high, prop, the high tensile strength. And so this high tensile strength allows it to be used for ropes and synthetic fibers. And it's rigid, solid, and durable nature allows it to be used in the place of metal bearings. Uh, it's also used in machine parts and it's also used in gun casings as well. And then we have polyester. So, Polyester, uh, most commonly refers to as polyethylene uh, tetra, poly, polyethyl tetraphthalate or PET. Um, it's quite stable. So it has, it has a highly stable aromatic ring, which makes it inert. So it's very unreactive. And the aromatic ring being quite large means it's quite rigid as well. So it's, it's a quite rigid substance as well. And it's also hydrophobic. So it's, it's scared of water. So it's insoluble in water, but it's, it's very durable. It's elastic and it's strong. And this uh, nature of it gives it the ability to be inert, rigid, and hydrophobic. So it's quite suitable for packaging foods. And it's also durable, elastic, and it's also durable and elastic, which means it can be used in clothing. So that is a summary of, that is a summary of polymers. So there's addition polymers and condensation polymers. And in terms of the summary that I'm gonna give, there's a couple, you need to be aware of the different types of questions that they can give you. So in, ter in terms of the HSC, they can ask you to compare th the differences between an addition polymer and a condensation polymer. So you need to know um, at least, you know, you should know all these. So you should know this four and these two. You should know maybe a couple more as well, but yeah. So addition, poly they can ask you to compare an addition polymer with a condensation polymer. So you need to look at the differences, right? So obviously, you know, one produces water, uh, one is like an addition reaction, one is a condensation reaction, etc. You need to uh, look at the different properties as well. They can also ask you to in detail describe the properties of one um, polymer, so any polymer. So they could specify an addition polymer and con a condensation polymer. They could specify like, like detail the, the formation and, and qualities of nylon 66, for example. So you need to be able to uh, denote that as well. Another thing is they can also ask you to write a long response on comparing two addition polymers with one another or two condensation polymers with one another. A good thing that I've seen is them asking to compare HDPE with LDPE. So if we go back here, HDPE is high density polyethylene with low density polyethylene. So they're asking us to compare these two. So those are a couple of questions that you should be aware of in terms of polymers.